Kage Kid Creative presents. Kage Kids Kitchen, Kage Kage Kids Kitchen. Kage Kids Kitchen, Kage Kage Kids Kitchen. episode the episode formerly known as the chicken episode but this is also my Halloween special episode just in case if you don't know what Kage Kids Kitchen is yet uh, it is an epi- uh, it's a show that uh, is based off of my culinary arts experience and then I amp it up based off of all of the experiences I've had after culinary school today I'm going to be joined by this lovely scarecrow whose birthday is today welcome Welcome, <laughs> Alley Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to Kage Kids Kitchen. <laughs> so today on Kage Kids Kitchen, we're going to be introducing you to the chicken breast. I'm going to be introducing you to some drier cooking methods. Uh, today we're going to be doing the saute motion. When you learn about chicken in culinary school, you learn about how to break down a chicken. You learn about how to cook each part of the chicken to its best potential. But today I'm really going to be focusing on the chicken breast. So for today's menu, I'm going to be making a chicken supreme, uh, which is a chicken cooked down in a velouté sauce that gets turned into a special supreme sauce that's special for chicken. And then after that, I'm also going to accompany it with some pumpkin grits as well. So for the very first thing that we're going to start with our chicken supreme is we're actually going to break down our chicken. Here I have a chicken breast. Um, as you can see, the skin is still on. They still have some bones. I'm going to completely remove the bones just to make this uh, recipe a little bit easier on myself. So in order to take out the bones, you want to make sure that uh, you see where the bones align on the chicken here. You just want to use that as a guideline to kind of cut the meat off of your chicken. Ooh, start from the top here. And today I'm using a paring knife to get through the bones of my chicken. It's just easier to get through. Follow the bone all the way down to the chicken breast so that you're getting the most meat as possible. Then once you have your chicken breast all done, you just want to make sure that it is nice and clean and as uniform as possible. Make sure to remove any of the excess skin that's on your chicken as well. And once your chicken looks like this, with the skin nicely all over it, it's ready to go to the next step. Once our chicken is nice and cut, once your olive oil is nice and hot on your pan, you want to get your chicken, make sure that it is skin side down. And you want to hear that nice sear on your chicken. Before you flip over your chicken, you want to sprinkle it with some salt and also some pepper as well. And you want to give it a nice flip over. When you flip over your chicken, you want it to be nice and brown. So once your chicken is all the way flipped over and it's brown on both sides, you're going to bring it over to a cooling rack where it can cool off for once we put it back into the sauce for later. Alrighty, so now that our chicken is done cooling, the rest of our guests have arrived. Uh, I'm going to welcome the fabulous Yana Bell, who's here in her Andre 3000 getup. Yes. Now we're a whole crew. Um, and in addition to Yana Bell being here, we also have two additional guests. We have Pi and Brandon in their adorable onesies. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys so much for being here. As we start on our chicken supreme, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by making a velouté sauce that later gets turned into a supreme sauce. On this tray, I have some chicken stock, mirepoix that I have that's specific for velouté sauce. We have some parsnip, celery, some onion, and some apples. We also have some butter here, lemon juice, white pepper, and some flour as well. The very first thing you want to do for your velouté sauce is you actually want to do two things. You want to start by warming up your chicken stock. <laughs> You're also going to melt down some butter. Which is great on everything. Butter is great on the everything. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. So the moment that your butter has melted, you're going to insert your mirepoix here. The reason why I'm using parsnips today instead of carrots is because carrots have a very similar 
flavor profile to parsnips, except that parsnips are white and will help to keep the sauce white as opposed to carrot that will add a little bit of a color to the actual sauce later. So the sauce has to be white? The sauce has to be white. Volute is known to be a white sauce um, that goes into most chickens, fishes, and vegetables from time to time. What's another well-known Volute Um, What did I make? I think we just did basic chicken, not chicken supreme, which which is made with velouté sauce that also has cream, butter, and lemon juice added to it later. Mm -hmm. um, but regular chicken velouté is also really, really delicious as well. Normally doesn't have apples. Are you doing the apples for sweetness? I'm doing the apples for okay. sweetness. So that's like your replacement for the carrot? It's uh, the parsnips is the replacement for the carrots. The apples is just to add like another fall ingredient to the whole recipe. Apples are today's chemical next. <laughs> for velouté sauce, it's very important that uh, you cook these things through and very fast. You do not want to cook it for too long in the same way we did for the very last time. So as soon as our onions are translucent, we're going to go on to the next step, which is to add flour. We're gonna give that a good stir in there. If you guys want to come over to the pot, you definitely can. <laughs> so, can we add anything to the pot? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Why not, okay. right? So if you guys look in here right now, you'll see the, this is kind of the thickening agent right here. Yep. The vegetables kind of take on this consistency of potatoes. Mm -hmm. You really want to just make sure that you're mixing in the flour in there. Like if you don't mix the flour, then it will become like gluey, I suppose? It, uh, it'll get a little gluier, but more, even more so, uh, you don't want clumps of flour in there because it won't mix into the chicken stock very well. Ah. So the viewers at home, please cut down your flour. Done. How do you know when it's done? Yeah. For a basic roux, you kind of want to cook it down for about uh, two to three minutes. If you cook it past then, you have the potential to make it a blonde roux, which will make the sauce yellower in color, but you don't want to... Cannot be yellow, it must be white. It must be white. <laughs> it must be white. Specifically for velouté sauce. <laughs> you want to develop the color. You Not for this sauce. This okay. sauce, you do not want to develop colors. This sauce is meant to be white. Uh, it's basically a okay. white gravy, essentially. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So could you replace this? just with gravy like let's say like if you sear the chicken and just don't want to oh, add the and just wanted to add yeah i just wanted to do a white sauce yes you could do gravy you could literally buy like a package of white gravy from the store and literally dump it on there oh. the cheating version of a chicken supreme as i've learned researching this recipe is literally to literally to get a can of campbell's chicken of uh, the campbell's mushroom soup dump it over the dump it over the chicken and call it a whole situation but like okay <laughs> but isn't that like chicken alfredo like that's like reminiscent of chicken alfredo it's very reminiscent of chicken alfredo but it's literally this and cheating oh my God. <laughs> if you want to i can have you put this chicken stock into here for me Yep, once your chicken stock is hot, you add it right into the vegetables and the roux. All of it? Yep, all of it. Okay. From here on out, you want to get this stirring as fast as possible. Do you want to stir it? I don't know. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, why not? I don't know. I'm not good. I'm not good. I, I can't cook. <laughs> it's literally if it just... went wrong, it's because I did it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay. <laughs> can I take a step? Yes, you can take a step. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you want it to get thick, right? Yes, so from here on out, we want it to get thick. Once our chicken stock is in here, we're actually going to let this simmer for about 30 minutes. It smells delicious. Like, not to be corny and like say what everyone else is saying, but like, I wish everyone had like smell of Yeah, like that should be, like, first of all, didn't we all think that we were going to be living in a distance? Yes. We really oh, did yes. say that we'd be living in adjustments and we would have like smell vision by now. But we don't. Everybody will be smelling like the near floor. <laughs> and how fragrant it is. That's like the like the most like familiar smell mm -hmm. of all time. Everyone in, in whatever culture you are, everyone has like a sense of near floor. While we're waiting for our velouté sauce to simmer down, uh, we're going to heat up our cream so that we can turn it into the supreme sauce once it's done. Uh, I have some cream here, and Kat is going to be the one to pour it right into the pot. Right. Yeah. 
Just so you remember from our last episode, when we are making a sauce with roux, you have to make sure that you are skimming the top for any kind of impurities. Make sure you're getting all of that. Ooh, a lot of impurities. What's in the impurities, I have to ask? No, that's a good question. So inside of the impurities, there's flour um, and a lot of the fat uh, that gets cooked up to the top and solidifies um, from a result of the heat. So you just want to make sure that you're getting all of that out. To be honest, in um, in most standard American sauces, you actually just keep that in there. Just keep stirring it all together until it's yes, yes. Oh God. mixed. So you just like whisk it in there? Uh, for most sauces, but for this sauce, uh, we're doing it the French way. So uh, we're oh. taking all of those impurities out as we're cooking. Once your velouté sauce has simmered down for about 30 minutes or it's about reduced for about halfway in size, we're going to add in our cream that we heated up. We're also going to add in some more butter, lemon juice. We're going to give that a good stir. That is now surprise us. It goes together. Once your sauce has come together, you're then going to add in your seasonings. I'm going to add in some white pepper, Italian seasoning, and I'm also going to add in some salt as well and give it one good last stir. Oh, can we taste it? I can have like a whole deep old tub full of stuff. It's so like, creamy. It's like creamy and like tangy, but like in the best way possible. I'm glad to hear that. You know why? Because this isn't even its final form. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> about to level up. I mean, I'm making notes, right? I could get away with saying all sorts of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta print that on aprons for, for all the viewers. This is not even my final form. This is oh my not god, even yes. my final <laughs> So the next thing that we're going to do with our sauce, we're going to put it back into that original pan that the chicken was in. It's really thick now. It is really thick. That was thanks to the roux. Mm. It was thanks to the roux. Alrighty, so... <laughs> Just get it out, get it out. <laughs> I'm doing the best here. Everybody do one, two, three, breathe in. Alrighty. So now that our Supreme sauce is cooking inside of our pan, we're going to add the chicken back into the pan so that it can finish cooking. So, take our chicken here, and we're gonna place them skin side up right into the pan. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Do you have to use chicken breast or can, like can you use like chicken thighs or any? So for chicken supreme you specifically use chicken breast. Mm -hmm. um, I'm cheating today uh, by not including the bones inside of the chicken breast. Mm -hmm. uh, but the chicken supreme is uh, mostly made um, for having the chicken bone out of here and specifically looking a certain way to work in order to make the supreme cut itself. Mm -hmm. That's why you make sure to so that when it goes into the sauce, it's not like super soggy. Exactly. Oh, okay. It's soggy skin, that's my thing. Yes, no, it makes, the, the skin, the super crispy skin is honestly what it makes these. We're gonna let this chicken cook down, and in the meantime, we're gonna start working on our grits. Mmm. Alrighty, so, now that our chicken is cooking, the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna start on our grits. Over here, I have some veggie stock. I have my uh, my old-fashioned grits here. I also have some Italian seasoning, some butter that we're going to brown. I also have some pumpkin puree here. Also have some uh, white pepper and some salt as well. <laughs> Wait, are we rolling? No. Yes, you are. That's a lie. If I ever heard. <laughs> just whisper it. Just whisper it. That's a lie. Just whisper it. Just whisper it. But you know what is our business? They're trying to twist the scarecrow. The chicken supreme. That's our business. 
They still have to use the brain. They still have to use the brain. This chicken is 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 something. So I I feel like really rejected right now. Why do you feel rejected? Because no brain, no brain in any of it. That's like seven ingredients right Listen, there. Listen, I'm sorry. I didn't know that I would be cooking for a scarecrow today. I didn't know I needed to be adding brain into my chicken supreme. <laughs> well, I accept your apology. I'm really starting to tears. Like I'm really starting to tears. As you are starting your grits, the very first thing you want to do is you want to brown your butter ahead of time. So we're gonna get that right into. When you're browning your butter, you can put it on a high temperature just so that it browns easily because you actually want to cook the butter a little bit as it's in the pan. Do you think it's um, difficult to make brown butter in your home? It is not difficult to make brown butter in your home. It's literally putting butter in a pan and literally just eating it up. But how long? But how, yeah. You can do a high temperature for about uh, four to five minutes. You can also do it on a low temperature for about 10 to 11 minutes. How do we actually know we haven't like burned it yeah like, so okay. so brown is safe black is not safe <laughs> black butter is a thing black butter is a thing it'll give you those uh those barbecue vibes when you actually lift the beat off this grill for that too <laughs> okay that's why we're asking because most likely if we ever attempt this at home the butter's gonna be black the first attempt <laughs> and then we're gonna have to clean the pan and then attempt it again <laughs> And then we'll the <laughs> then like, we already learned the lesson. All right, I guess I will say this for the viewers of Kaguya Kitchen. <laughs> if you are making brown butter, make sure that you are looking into the pan to see when the butter is actually brown, and then you stop. <laughs> when it's brown, you stop. When it's black, you start all over. When it's uh -huh. black, you start all over. Once you go black, you really yeah, can't go really back. Yeah, once you go black, you really, you really can't, can't go, go back. back. I, don't, I mean, if you want that. And most people do. Unless you're a middle America dad. <laughs> okay. Which case you do. Is that a demographic out here? Oh, Any Staten Island father? Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Staten Island, Island Barbecue <laughs> Dad. Just kidding. There's no way joke there. <laughs> this is just not brought to you by Staten Island. <laughs> So once your butter is nice and brown, we're going to take it out of the pan and we're going to set it off to the side. It's brown. You see the brown bit? Mm -hmm. The one thing I'm like excited for you to try is the grits. I'm excited to try the grits too. I'm a grits virgin. <laughs> grits virgin. That you, hi, I'm ready. Grits for the very first time. <laughs> grits virgin. <laughs> So the very first thing we're going to do to start our grits, we have six cups of vegetable stock here that we're going to get up to a rolling boil. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to slowly insert our grits and uh, continuously stir them as we uh, enter them. Once your grits are in there, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to roll this down to a simmer. And we're going to cover this and let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes until all the liquid has cooked up. Once the grits have thickened up quite a bit after 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to take it off of the heat. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our pumpkin, some Italian seasoning, our brown butter from the beginning, mm -hmm. <laughs> some salt, and some white pepper. Also going to add in some ground sage as well that in there. Make sure that the pumpkin gets really incorporated in there. The brown butter also gets really incorporated in there as well. And now that everything is done, it is time to eat. <laughs> the grits are creamy. Mm -hmm. The chicken is so soft. Mm -hmm. Kat, this is also your first time eating grits too, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you going through right now? I think that was a 
like an immediate yes from that reaction. <laughs> she cannot form any words right now, but she is. Exactly. I got you, girl. I'm feeling the same thing. I'm trying to hold it together. <laughs> Uh, pie and cat who've never had grits before, tell me, what do you think about the grits? Two thumbs up. Like, every score you can get for it, I would definitely like, put it all top max five. If this is definitely the final form we were waiting for, and I'm like here for it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. i never really been used to the pumpkin, the pumpkin smell or taste mm -hmm. in the past, but this tastes really familiar to me. Mm. Like, it's so strange. I thought that grits would be like this new thing that's like on the realm of like oatmeal or whatever. But this is very, very firm. But this is like, first time, definitely savory grits is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Savory, for sure. I make my grits a little less creamier than what's recommended because mm -hmm. usually when you go to a diner, you'll get grits and it'll just be like a sloppy mess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought it would be sucker. really liquidy. I thought it'd be really like, mm -hmm. But like something to drink rather than eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the weirdest stuff when you get out of the diner. Mm -hmm. My secret to grits is literally you cook the moisture out of it so that you can really just focus on the grits and the flavor. The apple pear is like that's in the in the supreme. Mm -hmm. um, it goes mm -hmm. well with the pumpkin. It's like a like a light, like very faint sweetness, but it adds so much. That's another thing too, because uh, I'm not usually a pumpkin person at all, mm -hmm. and like you have just like the right amount of pumpkin. Put into the grits itself, where it's not over saturated like every other that's on. I'm not a pumpkin person whatsoever, but this is really good. What are your thoughts about the chicken? It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's obliterated. Oh, this was really, really good. But okay. one more can be said. It's really, really good. Mm -hmm. I feel like our person are like, mm hmm, and just like. Eating the sugar. That's it, that's the best. Like, that's, that's how, how you know. know. That's how you that's know it's good. good. <laughs> I heard no, like, Japanese. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I think it's flavorful. I think it's like, the chicken is cooked to perfection. I think the grits are excellent when you're done. You can taste the sage, you can taste the pumpkin. Overall, like, a very great dish for dinner. It's quick, it's easy, and you can just enjoy it. Like, it will be, like, such a good dish. Like, I'm excited for you guys because you guys still have food. <laughs> you haven't gotten to the point where like, you I have, have no that. more food. <laughs> so you're going. Like, I'm sorry, it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> I have no shame. No. It usually takes me a while to eat, but yeah, that was really good. <laughs> it took me so long to eat. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just a slow eater. No, you're good. I'm usually a slow eater as well, but I just. Like, I like, it's I'm so good. Slow eater. I'm good. I'm good. Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's 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 one thing to like see it in videos and like knowing that you are a chef and you have been studying for this, but like actually tasting it, it's really it's really showing that you like went through a lot to, to get to where you are now. Thank you, thank you. Bro, no, that's a show. Wow. 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 Classy living right there. Just ring a ring a little bell, and then you. Oh, Bam! Uh, uh. <laughs> I Jesus has given. Wait, that is scraping the plate. That's how I it's know so it's good. good. <laughs> it's so good. It was a great dish. What is it? Let me look at the first one. Yes. 
I say last thoughts on the food before we. Uh, oh, let me set up. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> you will stop, Mom. So I think that answers the question for you. You enjoyed it. You're in like nap time mode. Listen, the eyes are setting in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Our face did not fall. Really good. Oh, it was it was ten out of ten. Like would we would eat again. And again and again and again. <laughs> like I had second. Jesus came and saved them. My final thought is that this is definitely a meal that you would wanna have either to bring on Thanksgiving when you know everybody else is on the air game. For Thanksgiving meals, more mm -hmm. to go ahead and create your own miniature Thanksgiving type flavor palette. Yeah. Without putting in too much effort. Because this was quick, it was easy, it was very, very flavorful, the textures were there, and it reminds you of that kind of Thanksgiving warm feeling. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm really excited to be eating this and to know how to make this myself. Yes, Thanksgiving yeah. Halloween, I love it. <laughs> Should we go? I'm gonna do something with turkey, maybe something cool and fancy in the oven. And make that room subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining me on my Halloween episode. Your costumes look awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys. We got a dragon, a scarecrow, and Andre 3000 that is now Vicky Bell Studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me on my fourth episode of Kage Kids Kitchen, the Halloween episode, formerly known as the chicken episode. I want to do another thank you to all of my friends that joined me on my episode today. Peace. Kage Kids Kitchen, Kage Kage Kids Kitchen. It has been a beautiful time at the studio. Please watch the episode. Please keep subscribing to Kage's Kids creative and follow along for our beautiful dishes because our friend will not yeah. disappoint will not disappoint whatsoever yep. i can definitely agree to that mm -mm. Mm -mm. i'm missing out or if you're mm -mm. not thank you for subscribing yeah <laughs>